All right, welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope you enjoy more content every week because my idea from now on is to actually have more content. I have some great ideas this year and hopefully it's going to be the year that I get to drop more videos than ever. But as usual, YouTube is all full of ups and downs and so is my life. So I keep your fingers crossed because I love to actually give you guys more content so you guys have more value from these videos. But without further ado, let's talk about Cascador. So here's how things have been, at least from my perspective about Cascador. Everybody's talking about AI and amongst all of the options they have out there about AI animation, Cascador gets mentioned quite a lot of times because it's the software that is closer to give you that AI animation that people have in their minds where you press one button and everything happens automatically. However, I do think, like I mentioned in my videos previously many, many times, we are years away from that ideal scenario that people think. And I do think that Cascador does things in a way that actually respects the animator and respects the work that needs to be done in order for you to tweak things. So they do just enough to actually facilitate your life, but they give you enough tools for you to tweak things to your own liking. This is why I spoke at length with Cascador and we started using it approximately internally here and there for specific reasons. And I do think that there is enough there that it becomes a tool that is really useful specifically if you are looking for that realistic timing. So if you or your studio are looking for a tool that gives you a little bit of an easier time and faster iteration for your animators to actually animate and get that realistic timing or fuse motion capture with hand key animation, I do think Cascador might give you more bang for buck than Maya or Motion Builder at this specific point based on their algorithm and how they implement some of the AI features or their smarts uh, behind the scenes on animation. Now I want to talk about three different things on this video that I think that will highlight how close they are starting to get to software like Maya and Motion Builder when it comes to animation and some of the things that us animators are looking for in a piece of software. So let's look at some of them. Okay, so here we are in Cascador and I love how minimalistic their software is. And one of the things that I've realized, the more I'm starting to play with, the more we're starting to play with in, um, you know, at Proxima is that you have to kind of think about this software in a different way. And it has a lot to do with auto physics and physics in general. Now, I have worked in games enough to know that physics is an incredibly important part of any game making. And if you can simulate physics, you actually save a bunch of time. The amount of times that I or my teams have been trying to simulate a fall or, you know, if you could just press a button and have that simulation done for us, great. But a lot of the times, even though you are working in an engine and uh, engines are incredibly good at simulation, you still need to create the animations bespoke. And having a piece of software like Ascador that can do a lot of simulation is super useful. Now, when it comes to the animation parts of the software that help you a ton, the first thing that I want to talk about is this new feature that were implemented at the end of last year called Auto Interpolation. So it's this button right here. And I was thinking that it was very much like Auto Tension for Maya, which allows you for Maya to work a little bit behind the scenes on getting your curves to looking a little bit better. So what Auto Interpolation does is actually in a smart way, it looks at your body and your rig and kind of defines what is moving, what is not moving and what kind of tangent do you want for any specific limb. But it does it in a much cleverer way where if you actually have a foot that is not moving because it realizes and knows where the foot is and how much movement there is, it knows that in that specific foot, if there's no movement, you actually have a stepped tangent, right? Now, if you have a movement, a foot that is moving, such as this uh, example here, uh, then you know that if it is actually moving in a linear fashion, then you actually have a linear interpolation, which actually helps you a ton. And it's the same thing with, you know, uh, your, your wrists here that happen here at a later point. You have more of a curve, so obviously you don't want a linear interpolation. So it starts to give you like the best interpolation for that specific controller. So you start to see how beneficial that is because you start to understand that the Cascador engine underneath, the, the, the algorithm underneath, all the clever bits underneath are trying to help you to get the best type of 
interpolation for any two keys at all times, which means that you spend less time on your graph editor um, and then you spend more time animating the character, making sure that the movement is as good as possible. And if you change your animations and if you start massaging your animations, those interpolations will change with it. So you start to see what auto-interpolation means for Cascador when you have this AI algorithm working underneath. And the more I look into Cascador, the more I'm starting to understand some of the ways that AI might be able to help us in the future as we animate. So it's really, really awesome. Um, one thing that I've noticed with Cascador is that the tracks and how you set keys is very much like we used to way back in the day in Maya called Dope Sheet. So it's basically keying every single controller and it's telling you what controller you actually have keyed, which is something that we may talk about in the future video. Now, the second feature that I would like to talk about is Lifelink. And I wanna specifically highlight this one because this one is a huge one for us gameplay animators. Maya has had Lifelink for many, many years and it has helped a lot of us to actually be able to see what goes on in Maya in Unreal Engine. So you can actually play, edit your animations and see those things happening live in Unreal and that helps a ton. And Cascador has pretty much the same features and Live Link is something that needs to actually be a handshake between the software and Unreal. So the features that you're gonna find in this Live Link are gonna be very similar to the features that you find in the Maya Live Link. Now, you have a synchronization tab now in Cascador that basically allow you to connect Live Link, similar to what Maya has as well. And then you're gonna use exactly the same plugin that you have used for Maya called Live Link. This plugin is basically made by Epic. So it kind of makes sense that it uses the default plugin instead of a bespoke one. And then you're gonna go ahead and set it up exactly the same way. I have made a video previously about how to set up Live Link between Maya and Unreal. I'll link it down below, check it out, and it will actually give you all the steps that you need but I'll also link a link down below on how to set up Cascador with Live Link exactly in this way. Now, once you have that connection, that handshake set up, what you're gonna find out is that you can do what I just described, which is you can press play in Cascador and then you can then see it in Unreal live, right? Now, this is great for many reasons. And one of the things that you can do for sure is as mentioned, you can actually have an environment, a lit environment with a specific character that actually has exactly the same skeleton. And once you connect it with some blueprint magic, you can get to see your character animating in a specific environment. Now, if you are a uh, animator looking to do build a showreel, looking to actually kind of like have your characters incredibly well lit in your showreel and you are using Cascador, then I think this is a brilliant way for you to actually capture your animations and do it in a really cool fashion. Okay, so last feature I wanna highlight for you guys today is Ragdoll. And um, it's actually quite crazy because as soon as I saw Cascador, maybe two or three years ago, I remember perfectly, this would be an amazing tool to create Ragdoll of animations that I've made in Maya, but I, they haven't really had Ragdoll all this time. And whenever you actually press simulation, the characters will plop to the ground. But now they have implemented Ragdoll and the physics of it all are, are basically what Cascador does best. And to me, the way that we've been testing it out and when we've been using it is that Basically, once the animation or mocap is in a good place, let's say an actor actually took the mocap and actually fell off a chair, but then he fell into a mat. Obviously, a mat is not going to be good enough. What we have is a ramp, or what we have is like, you know, a slope or a rock or anything like it. As long as you have the object, as long as you can simulate it, you can then get Cascador to finish your animation, your physical animation, and then make it look as good as possible. This is specifically useful for cinematics, at least for us, because in cinematics, everything is baked in and you don't really use the dynamics of the engine as much, depending on the use case scenario, you would want to kind of control things a bit more. And this has helped us tremendously. Now, another use case scenario that you have is when it comes to tails or coats or anything that you can actually kind of like put some physics into. I think this has a lot of potential. It's obviously its first step of Cascador to actually implement physics and ragdoll in this way. But you can already tell that because this algorithm systems that they have under like the, the, the software are working incredibly hard. You can tell that this is gonna be perfect for physics dynamics because this is what the software does best. Now, another thing that has been implemented, part of the same idea, 
for Ragdoll in physics is the interaction between two characters. And this is incredibly important because it's something that I felt like was missing. Most of the time in Cascador you had to work with one character only. And if there was an interaction between two characters, somebody punching each other or whatever, then um, it will be hard to work with two characters and you have to set up both characters individually and then do a lot of massaging to get those things to kind of connect well. And for me, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just go to Maya and do it that way because I'm familiar with it. But now there's a strong reasoning for you to do it in Cascador and it's because Cascador is now aware that there's two characters with two different physics and two different capsules that actually need to interact. And if one is punching and the other one is receiving, they know how to actually kind of like get those things solved in the best way possible. They have these things called fulcrum points and those things can actually be snapped onto each other. And because they can be snapped onto each other, now you can have characters holding each other, you can have characters hitting each other, and then you can have characters holding into things and actually kind of like swinging off things and stuff. And it helps tremendously. So these are the three features that I wanted to highlight in this video, I think that having more software like Cascador that is trying to solve the issues that we have as animators in a more creative way, especially in this AI era, is very interesting and is very commendable. As I mentioned here, hopefully you got to see it, you get to see and use some of the tools that actually make your life a little easier, but at the same time, it's not taking away from the art of animating, right? And a lot of the work that we've been doing has been a lot of the heavy lifting and hand key or mocap has been already captured or done in Maya or Unreal or in other software. And then we bring it into Cascador to actually use some of these features that they have, such as physics and, and solving some of these problems. And I think that marriage is really, really cool. And especially for indie developers, we need some of this tooling that makes our life a little easier so we can basically do more animations in less time with smaller teams. So you can start to see hopefully how Cascador can actually help out and it's definitely helping us out in Proxima with all our animations in our pipeline to make sure that we make more work in less time. Now, I might do a couple more videos of these, so stay tuned and until the next video, stay well, stay safe, peace.